Well, I think we're going. Huh. Crazy. Um, I I haven't done a podcast in oh gosh, in almost like seven months, I think. Whenever whenever the last Dead Kings podcast episode was. Um But welcome to the first episode of the Bucket Head Podcast. Now, while I know what you're looking at is it's 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 looks so just ghetto and thrown together well, that's because it is right i'm still kind of finding my bearings when it comes to doing a podcast um solo i had everything firing on all cylinders with the dead kings podcast we kind of stopped that that was mine and brady's podcast um and life just got really busy uh and it was more centered around just brady and i and occasionally Forrest talking about pop culture stuff and whatever, and, you know, TV, games, movies, whatever, what, 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 whatever it may be, that's what we were talking. All things pop culture, right, that, that we enjoyed. Um, and with this podcast, it's a solo podcast. It's mine. Brady may appear. I want to have guests on here. Um, so f- maybe from artists, whether it be, you know, like, drawing artists to prop makers, fellow cosplayers, other podcasters, fellow gamers, what whoever it may be, I'd love to have other guests on here and talk about talk about the issues of life as it were. Um but anyway, like I said, welcome to the first official episode of the Buckethead podcast. And today I'm just wanting to talk about just how cosplay has kind of changed since I started, how I've noticed things have changed. And obviously, obviously a lot of this is really just kind of what's happened, like within my own mental capacity and my own experience. And I'm going to rattle off some things and maybe other people are resonating in their feel in the same way. I don't know. It's just something I've wanted to touch on for a very, very long time. Um, So what I'm going to do to kind of <laughs> to keep myself in order um i've got a couple topics that i'm gonna pop up right now that are things i want to i want to i want to touch on as i go down this list of things that i where i feel that um cosplay has just changed the most right um so in the beginning right the beginning is essentially my beginning i started cosplaying i want to say around 2013 um, I've been cosplaying for over 10 years now, um, 2012, 2013 ish, if I remember correctly. Um, and I was cosplaying when Deadpool really still wasn't that popular. So if you don't, if you know me, like I'm, I'm the sole host air quotes of the Buckethead podcast, Buckets and stuff, T or Taylor, whatever you want to call me. Um, if you know me, uh, and you probably don't know that like I started out cosplaying War Machine. It was a really bad version of War Machine, like really bad costume, terrible as most first costumes are. Um, but I started out in 2012, 2013 and cosplay was still kind of a thing where people would look at you and they'd be like, what the heck are you doing? But it was still somewhat more known than it was way before me. Right. Um, but that's when I started cosplaying, and it, my first three costumes were War Machine, Iron Man, and then uh, Deadpool. And Deadpool was what I mainly cosplayed for the longest time, up until I realized, like, hey, I could cosplay more than one character at a time. So back in the day, I used to only cosplay one character at a time. Uh, and then, and that was how it went for a couple years. Um, and then I realized, like I said, I could do more than one costume. So it then evolved into snake eyes and scorpion and all this different stuff. So, uh, cosplay, obviously it was something that you really had to go out and do. Um, and at this time I, I wasn't huge on Instagram. I wasn't big on using it. I wasn't big on really anything that wasn't Facebook. So I would do my own little photo shoots, right? So it was really ghetto. Um, What I would do is I would steal my dad's microphone stand and I would film myself on my phone in different poses in the backyard (laughs) 
and I would screenshot those, and those, that was my photo shoots, right? Because I, I w- was and really still am very picky as to, like, who takes my pictures and stuff. Because, like, I want them the way I want them, right? I know that there's photographers and stuff out there that see things better than how I could see them, and I, but I know how I want my stuff done. So I have, like, two or three other people that I, like, shoot with or that I, like, have take my pictures um, but back in the day, that's how it was. Like I, I, it wasn't even so much that I was like, Oh, I'm just really shelled off or of, as to who I want to take my pictures and whatnot. It was that I just didn't have a lot of resources or a lot of connections. Now you can go on Instagram and type in cosplay photography and boom, there's a whole list. Everyone's crediting everybody and everything. And you could find a photographer in your area pretty easily now. Like, it's actually crazy with how many groups are on Facebook and the TikTok community that's taken off that I'll talk about later in the video. But a lot of resources are so, it's so easy to to find. Now, it's not easy to talk to these people by any means, but it's so easy to find um, these resources, right? Back in the day, you had to join so, back in the day as if I'm 90 years old. Um, but back in the day, you had to, um, like, join Facebook groups in order to find out how, what costumes were what and and how to commission people to do things. I remember I was part of a group that was, it was called Cosplay, no, it was called Heroes for Hire. And that's where you would post, hey, I want this costume. Is there anyone who can make it? And it used to just be if no one could make it, then you just weren't cosplaying that. If you didn't know how to build your stuff, and I'm not even going to get into prop building because I don't build my own stuff. Um, and that's, that's, that is a, I'd love to have my buddy Sentinel on and talk about prop building from when it first started to what it's like now. Um, for him, at least being a prop builder. Anyway, uh, so it, it cosplay is just so accessible now and it's amazing. And I feel like a lot of people, and this isn't really even a term anymore, but mainstream, I guess, is people are considering cosplay mainstream. And cosplay's been mainstream for a long time, um, especially with the younger generation coming in. It's 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 cosplay's been mainstream. Um, it's just more accessible now. And I guess that that's a contradiction. But like cosplay is just like so many people want to cosplay. It wasn't hard to hop online and go to like a place called Cost Sky or any of these other places that sold just pre put together costumes like a Harley Quinn costume or a Deadpool costume or Anakin Skywalker costume or whatever it may be. It wasn't hard to do that for the, like for the past 10 years, it hasn't been hard to do that. But with how Etsy is when Etsy came up, Oh my goodness. The boom of Etsy. It used to be that it was just small little handmade trinkets that they were selling on Etsy. Etsy really isn't what they say it is, which is all handmade everything. Cause there are people selling like black series helmets left and right on there um so it's it's 100 percent not just <laughs> it's not just handmade stuff now um but etsy is it, with things being so accessible like etsy you could find someone who builds a uh, mandalorian armor and then you could reach out to them and they could build any type of armor for you it used to be a rat race to find someone who could help you or uh, commission someone to build something for you um so that was, that's kind of just the roots. Um, I remember what I used to do is I used to, I don't know if anybody remembers the super zeros or, um, they were, a, a flash mob group and that takes you back. Cause no one really does flash mobs anymore. Um, but they were a flash mob group and they obviously were mortal Kombat characters. Amazing. So inspired. Um, also there was, uh, it was the Sean Ward show. Uh, the, the, his Toronto Batman series was a really big inspiration to me. So when I had my Deadpool stuff, I kind of wanted to do stuff like that, where I would just walk in like Deadpool invades was the series I wanted to do. And I went into like a GameStop and I don't know about any of you, but uh, if you had FYE or hot topics or whatever, and I went in there head to toe with metal swords and realistic, no rubber or no orange tip airsoft guns and i just walked into these places in full deadpool kit no one thought anything it was a couple weird looks a high five now and then it wasn't the reaction that i thought it was gonna be 
but it definitely would not fly today. Like I, I have such a hard time, like back in the day, again, I used to be able to go to any park, any place and just shoot my stuff and not have any issues. It was 2019 when, um, they, I think it was wars and whenever ghost made his comeback, um, that in modern, it was modern warfare 2019. It was, it was me, Brady, and then our friend Eddie, and we were going to shoot my ghost in just this parking garage. And I had actually asked for permission from the security place before then, or the security of the place before that occurrence. Because before that, I had shot Red Hood there. And we actually showed up there without permission, and they didn't care, and they were like 24-hour security. It was at a movie theater. Um, Excuse me, I just needed some water. Anyway. But so we had shown up there and I tried calling the security and I got no answer. And I was like, oh, it's middle of the day. No one's really going to be doing anything. It's a weekday. No one's at the movies. Sure. Fine. Let's just go. Well, we get there. There's no one in the parking garage. No one. Like there's not a single car there. We go down there. We're shooting all that stuff like 15 minutes in. I because I'm shooting. I'm like aiming down the stairs at the camera and they're aiming up and out of the corner of my eye, I see a car come down and my heart sinks. I'm like, I already know that's the police. I already know it's the cops. And I look over and it's two SUVs and I'm like, Oh, lovely. And then two more. And then a couple cruisers. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Now we had been down there gearing up for a good 20 minutes, right? And only 15 minutes into shooting did did the police show up. Well, they said that security saw on the wet, on the, uh, on the security camera, people, a guy in a, in a skull mask with a gun and was just kind of hanging out and they called the police on that. And I was like, okay, we, I kind of had a back and forth with the police. Cause they're like, you know, you're not supposed to be here. Right. And I was like, well, I tried calling and I've shot here before and I've never, I've never had an issue every time I've shot here and I've shot looking scarier than how I look now. Um, but that's just one of the changes that I've noticed is that like, it's really hard to just go out. If you're a tactical cosplayer or whatever, at least in the States, if not in my state, it's hard to shoot, do photo shoots and stuff like that. Especially to like a lot of people are just really, really anal about if they let you on their property or whatnot and scouting locations, like scouting locations is really, really fun. But also when you're, when life is lifing and you've got a full-time job and you've got other things that you need to take care of, there's not much time to go and scout locations. And what hasn't changed about cosplay is a lot of people really gatekeepy about their locations. So I've noticed a lot of people just don't disclose where they shoot stuff. And I have a couple sweet spots that I shoot at um, and they're not secrets at all. Like you can, I'm pretty sure you can find out where they are if you look at my pictures, but like, if you've noticed on my stuff, at least on Instagram, all my pictures are almost stills of a lot of my videos is because that's kind of like, I've kind of gone back to the roots, right? Of taking screenshots of my, of my videos and making those my photos is because it's just hard to shoot stuff nowadays. Um, because everyone be freaking out and everyone's worried. And even with orange tips on guns, it's, it's really, really hard. And it's, that's just like the world we live in now. Right. So that's one big change and one really difficult thing about cosplay um i'm not sure if that's the thing for all the fantasy cosplayers or anime anime cosplayers i i would imagine not but when it comes to like tactical stuff whether it be like uh, even i had an issue when i was shooting boba fett right it was it was which is weird you know i don't know um but when it comes to like titanfall like i love i i wish i could shoot my titanfall pilot a lot more than i can Um, but it's almost impossible, especially to when you have the gritty areas, right? Like you need a gritty industrial looking area. And a lot of those places are either privately owned or like just around a lot of old people who, who be freaking out all the time. Then it's, it's a little, it's a little difficult. Um, but that's like one of the big, the big first changes of just photography and being able to do photo shoots has changed a lot. Um, even though it is really accessible, for a lot of locations, it's it's also just people are very, very standoffish when it comes to that kind of stuff. Uh, the next one, conventions. 
So conventions for me has changed because it's not so much now. And I, again, I want to redo or not redo, but do another version of this podcast with other cosplayers, right? Conventions has changed as to the point of, I've noticed that at least the convention here, they don't really have many like professional cosplayers. And if they do, they don't promote them. So they, people, they can get like, they used to invite at our, at my convention, it's fan salt Lake, but it used to be called salt Lake comic con, right? Until the owners of, (laughs) <laughs> the owners of Salt Lake Comic Con decided to be stupid and promote their convention outside of San Diego Comic Con. That's a whole other video that I want to do. And uh, it's old news. It really is. But at the same time, like idiots, they ended up getting sued and they can't use the name comic, the words Comic Con in their stuff anymore. So it's Salt Lake. It's Fanex Salt Lake Comic Convention. Anyway, back in the day, they used to actually invite cosplayers and then promote them. And they don't do that anymore, which is really wild because I'm sure all their their efforts are going to celebrities and stuff. Now it's really that cosplayers are booking their own booths and having to promote themselves at these conventions. And that makes me wonder, too, is the term professional cosplayer really a thing anymore? Because, like, I maybe maybe this is a bad take. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm just shooting this into the wind, right? The term professional cosplayer used to be at face value that you were paid to cosplay. So you were invited and paid to come to this convention and be there as well as you're being paid to do photo shoots and you're being paid, i.e. you're selling your prints and your merch and all that stuff, right? Now you could look at a professional cosplayer as someone who makes content, cosplay content for a living. So, like, that's one big change is, like, the professional cosplayers aren't really a thing anymore. They're just content creators. I guess the term has just changed, but they're a cosplay content creator. Um, And it was really big because, too, like, when professional cosplayers were a thing, too, on, on top of that with professional cosplaying, it used to be that professional cosplayers also used to compete in cosplay contests. Um, not, it wasn't like a mandatory thing that they had to do, but that was like a lot of professional cosplayers used to do that. And then that sprung <laughs> the TV show heroes of cosplay. I don't know if any of you remember that show, but it, it, it definitely was, it was a thing. It was a thing. Um, but yeah, conventions have changed a lot. Uh, at least that I feel like cosplay, everybody cosplay is, on a, is at a all time high when it comes to con- uh, cosplaying at conventions. Um, but I just feel that like, it's just not as promoted now. Cause I feel like it's, it's kind of like, Oh, Hey, yeah, people are going to be cosplaying anyway. Like, so, and, and when I've gone to the conventions that I go to, the cosplayers are nowhere to be found. Like they're either tucked back in a spot that you can't really find or they're, I don't know. They're just like, not, it used to be a dedicated area and it was a whole row of cosplayers. Like it was one long table and they were all there with all their stuff matched up again. Maybe other cons are different, but I'm just talking about the convention here, right in my state. Um, anyway, so now they're kind of spread everywhere. Or like, if you don't get your booth at a certain time, you're put in a different part of the convention. I don't know exactly how it works, but I've noticed they're scattered. Like they, they are scattered. Goodness gracious, what was that? Holy cow. Anyway, um, but conventions are just kind of, I don't know. They're, they're, I've just noticed that conventions are more like going to Wish. And you're kind of looking at like the Wish knives or the Wish, the Wish airsoft guns. Like I feel like a lot of the booths at conventions, again, at least the ones that I've been to, that it's just some people, some random people who have bought a ton of just like really cheap knives or brass knuckles or all the, you know, I'm pretty sure, you know, like the, the things that I'm talking about, they buy like random ass board games at a mall or something. And they just come to the convention back in the day. It used to be like there were actual prop makers. there selling their stuff. 
there were people who were hand making like medieval renaissance era dresses and they were selling those uh, uh what was the goblet mug leather covers and all that different stuff that was the stuff that vendors were selling and obviously you had your comic book stands and all that stuff and you had the pop stand and the lightsaber stand and the anime wig stand and all that stuff but now it, it, it seems like everything is starting to look the same at conventions um and I can't really speak to panels or all that different stuff because I never really went to conventions for those. I went to hang out with my cosplay friends and maybe buy something cool. Um, I remember that like ocarinas were like so rare to find. Like if you know me, you knew that I was on a hunt for an ocarina up until a couple of years ago. Um, I have a picture still from my very first convention. Uh, I want to say it was like second or third that I was holding an ocarina. I'm like, one of these days I'll be able to afford one. And, um, I, I, I couldn't find one for years and now they're everywhere. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely feel that just conventions have changed. And I feel like the feeling of conventions have changed, at least for myself. Um, conventions I used to be excited for now, not really so much anymore is that it's just as one of the topics here is stress. It's just kind of just a stressful time. Like you're, you're not, you're no, it doesn't really feel like you're going to a convention for yourself, right? It feels more like you're going to a convention for everybody else. Like you're going to hang out because other people want you to go. Like I've had a couple friends that have been like, Hey, you going to the convention? Are you going to the fan X or whatever? I'm like, nah, I don't know. Like, Oh, you should come. You should come. We should get photos. And sometimes you have out of state friends that that's the only time you can see them or you can kick it with them or that you can, you know, do photos and stuff with them. So for me, it feels like I'm slowly, it's slowly becoming that I'm going to conventions for other people instead of going for myself. Um, especially what, like when there's no, like no celebrities and I want to see or any vendors that are going. Um, but that, that's just that, I don't know. Like, again, this is all personal for me and I don't know if it resonates with anybody else. Um, but this is just, again, like I said, something I just wanted to scream into to just get out of my system for the longest time. Um, now the next thing is cost. Now this, I feel like a big thing for this one, a lot of people are going to, will probably grill me for is that like, um, when it comes to the cost of cosplay, it, it comes down to, oh, well, if you just make your stuff, if you make your own stuff, it's going to be a lot cheaper. And that's not necessarily the case. Like I have friends who 3d print. I have friends who, so I have friends who do every, I have friends doing this for so long. You, you, you meet people who have all different type of skill sets. Um, so I have, I have friends who do a, multiple things within this, the span of cosplay. And they've all told me that if you make your own stuff, it still is crazy expensive. I was talking to one of my buddies who does 3d printing. And he said, just the cost of 3d printing can be crazy expensive because you don't know if you're doing like it also, it depends on the size and how much filament you're using but also the, the, the type of printer you buy, the type of software you're running, the, how much the expensive, how expensive the filament is. And then also it comes to, well, you just used your last bit of filament on a print that decided to up and die in the middle of the night. And that's what you're dealing with. So you get to buy more filament. You have to pay to, you have to fix your, your 3d printer. And if you have to get new parts for the 3d printer, like it, it all just, that alone in 3d printing and then on top of that it also comes down to materials to, to to put your stuff together and prices for those materials have gone up too um so it, when it comes to a, a prop builder or a, a costume maker standpoint i understand that it's gotten more expensive and i've had friends who've told me it's gotten more expensive and that's why they're stepping away from cosplay um, because it's just, it's, it's an expensive hobby and, and that really too cosplay used to be a hobby to me. And I'll get to that at the end. Um, anyway, so the cost coming from me, like I like to do recycle costumes. Like I have costumes that I don't do anymore that I've turned into something else or that I'm using for something else because it's just too damn expensive. Like just, just looking at it this way for all my call of duty friends out there for all the call of duty homies, right? A lot of people have asked me where I get my gear and whatnot. And a lot of my gear is just stuff I've reused over the years because tactical gear is expensive as hell, especially now, especially when you go into an airsoft store, you go on e-bike, they know that it's not all airsofters that are buying this stuff. A majority of them could be, but a lot of them just are cosplayers who don't know better and they don't know that there's somewhat cheaper alternatives out there. Um, 
but cosplay just just the airsoft stuff in by itself is unbelievably expensive excuse me i needed a i need a, a drink of water um but anyway it's 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 coming to the fact that like with my, my helmet alone my my airsoft helmet alone i don't have obviously it does not have real nods on it it does not have real nods it has a, a cheap counterweight system on it none of the stuff on that is real i think the only metal thing i have on there <laughs> which is wildly the cheaper part is the is the helmet is the mount um and i think that helmet putting that helmet together was about two hundred and thirty dollars two hundred and thirty dollars for a hunk of plastic i put on my head now i could say that about all my helmets but when it comes to a helmet that's supposed to look like it's functional in the sense of like real world stuff and it's not that's that's wild that's wild i remember when helmets used to only cost like 130 tops maybe um and the base helmet alone was 60 bucks which uh, here and there it's it's they, they floated around that price forever um but just just alone like when it comes to cosplay like etsy you go to etsy like for me my boba fett costume was about twenty five hundred dollars um, and that was the newest version that I, that I had done. Um, and that comes from getting the flak vest made to getting the armor made to getting everything made. And it's all my Boba Fett costume came as a kit, essentially everything except the soft parts I put together myself. So I had to buy the armor, sand that down buy the buy the material to sand it down, to smooth it out, then to prime it, then to paint it, then to seal it. The stickers, like the the, the the gauntlets, the knees, the jet pack, all that stuff. I had to put I had to buy and put all that stuff together. And I didn't hate it, but it was very, very, very expensive. And I think it's like cosplays at all time high. Because there's also huge demand for cosplay stuff now. People are like, hey, I'll do it, but it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg. Um my biggest my biggest take is that right now, as a ghost cosplayer, um ghost cosplays the wild thing is like so not to not to plug him here but sentinel sentinel probably has the best and most affordable ghost masks on the market today um there are other companies out there who are selling ghost masks for twice as what he, uh, twice as much as what he's selling them for and they're definitely not as good um i've seen a ghost mask go for upwards of four hundred dollars on etsy and it's unheard of and I, to me, to me, that's excessive. It might be a hot take. To me, that's excessive. Um, it, it's just, it's just wild to me. Like a a, a a mask, a little bit of plastic, and some cloth, and you're charging four hundred dollars for that. Um, there are also are also people who are buying gloves, like gloves you could find on Amazon, and then just painting them to look like ghosts' gloves. And they're charging $150 for them. I posted that to my story a while ago. It's like, do not get scammed by these people. Um, and I, I do see that as a scam or it's a rip off. They're ripping you off because like you should not be paying $400 for a ghost mask. You, you just really should not. Um, and I have I have several ghost masks. And yes, a couple of them. I, I'm sponsored by a, a company that their masks are on the more expensive side, but also the paint with this other company is Sazara the paint work and it's one person doing all this stuff and modeling the mask out and all that good stuff. It's unmatched when it like the gold with Sazara's mask has not been matched with any other mask that I've, that I've had. Um, just that, that I don't know if you've seen it, but it's the gilded, the gilded ghost mask. Anyway, that is the part of, of, of the cost of cost with it's just really, really just, just e excessive and, and out there. Um, I don't feel again that you, that anybody <laughs> famous cosplayer or non-famous cosplayer that should be paying $400 for something that's a not worth it and B it's a hobby. Like, why are you, why are you, why are you putting people out over a bit of plastic and some and some spandex or or a balaclava like again come at me if you will but that's ridiculous um but also like i said 
it comes with demand. Like people will come in droves. And I, I know this because I've seen it firsthand from a buddy of mine who is a prop maker. He's like, hey, I, I either take all the commissions I can and I'm putting them out every now and then. Or I'll take a limited amount of runs, and then if someone comes to me with a really big request, I'll say, yeah, I'll do that, but it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. I understand that. I am not a businessman as in the sense of I don't give goods for some sort of currency. I don't do that, so I'm not going to tell anyone how to run their business. But I feel that I need to when you're charging $400 for something that is not worth $400. Anyway, the next thing is the stress and TikTok. These two kind of go together. Um, in my earlier years of cosplaying, I never felt any stress to post. I never felt any stress to go viral. I never felt any stress to have any sort of fame from cosplay. I was kind of just posting my stuff and doing my thing and accepting whatever happened. Like if it got one like, it got one like. I didn't care. I just wanted to post it and let people know that, hey, this is cool. I, I like this. Like this is this is this is what I can create. Um now obviously with TikTok and with with how social media is now, that did get to me. I did feel that like I had an obligation to be posting every single day or every other day, to be making a hundred videos in one session, to be making sure I was posting it with trending sounds and trending hashtags and following algorithms and all that different stuff. And at the cost of my own mental health, when it came to stressing me out and just, just being bummed when a video wouldn't do as well as I had hoped and like feeling entitled that I'm like, I deserve to have it because I put so much time and effort into it. Um, and I feel like I'm just like, I, there, there's been so many times where I've been like, oh, I'm just going to take a break from social media for a bit or a break from TikTok for a bit. And I come back and it's honestly no better than when I left. Um, and I just feel that like it's it's even even like because when I did start cosplaying ghosts, like transparent as all heck. When I did start cosplaying ghosts, that was the thing that skyrocketed a lot of my viewership and, and, and my and my community and just my followers and everything. Um and I felt like I was, I was holding myself to a standard. I was holding myself to a standard in the, in the sense that like I needed to be posting, like I said, posting every day. I needed to be making a video, you know, filming three times a week, doing three, three hour filming sessions a week. I was staying up till one or two in the morning and I'm like, bro, I'm not getting paid for this. Like I am not getting paid. <laughs> I'm not getting paid to be doing all this stuff um like going above and beyond and and essentially just destroying my own mental health um and so it it, it, it comes to the point like i feel like I've, I've talked to other cosplayers about this and cosplayers um a couple of them have under ten thousand followers and, have, and a couple of them have over two hundred thousand followers and i wanted to get that 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 if there was a uh, a common ground there where they both felt the same way that I did and they did um there were two of them and one of them like I said had under 10,000 followers and they were like I feel the pressure of needing to post and needing to do this because I want to raise my followers and I want to raise this and I want to raise myself and I want to I want to keep I want to just grow and all that stuff and the person with 200,000 followers who over 200,000 followers who was being paid was like, well, I got to keep this up because if my, if, if, if my content drops, then my income drops and all this stuff. And I look at it like, so we have people out here who aren't being paid to cosplay, but cosplay is now stressing them out to a point where they feel like they need to work as hard as someone who is trying to put food on their table by cosplaying. Like, and I, I don't know if that's like, obviously that you could say that's self-induced, but also it comes to the point that like just the cost, the culture of cosplay now is feeling more so like a popularity contest than it is a hobby and just hanging out with friends and just interacting with people. Um, and on that other side of stress comes the culture and the community when it comes to the whole spicy stuff deal. And this has been a hot is going to be a hot take. And I know it's going to probably be an unpopular opinion, 
but when it comes to the the spicy thirst trappy all that good stuff I will say that I I dipped a toe into that because I thought it was fun and I thought it was kind of it was saucy you know and I knew that that that, that my community and the, and the people liked it and it was innocent at first and now what I see at least like I I don't associate or do that stuff at all like I don't you'll never see me thrusting the phone you'll never you'll never see me doing all of that stuff um but that seems to be the norm and this comes again this comes to the, the 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 topic of TikTok is that people's boundaries are being invaded due to the community cosplay or cod community in general doing this stuff um that's not to say that it's warranted or that it's deserved or that people this is what you get for doing that i'm saying that people are slow are not able to differentiate one cosplayer from another and and that like it, we're at the point now in this world where people have to put boundaries on a boundary video out saying, Hey, don't do this or do this, or you can do this, but you can't do this. Right. The people who I've followed that do not thirst trap at all have to do that stuff to be like, I am not comfortable with anybody flirting with me at all. They have to put that out there and let everybody know that that's something that they're not okay with when that should already be a thing. Like you should already just not open up. Like I, I want to do a whole nother TikTok, uh, podcast episode. Just reading all my filtered comments, and there are those, there are those those saucy comments. You know, every now and then it's like, okay, I see you. I know those little spicy comments, but there's also the one that's like, I want to break my head off inside of you. Like some people say the most out of pocket things. A, is it for shock value? I'm sure. Is it for attention? Obviously, it's the internet. You don't post anything on the internet and that you don't want attention for. But then there have been those horror stories that I have heard of people being going so far as to being stalked. Now, being stalked because of the internet isn't something that's new. But when it comes to the COD community, it er, COD community, when it comes to the cosplay community, this has been an issue for the longest time that you think that it would go away. And you think that people would understand that when I post something online, I'm posting it because I'm playing this character or my version of this character. And a lot of people can't different differentiate that. Um, it's it. It comes down as well to the whole, like I said, with stress and with TikTok, and that there is, we are now in the era of TikTok cosplay. And I've, I've, uh, I've even heard and been called the term a TikTok cosplayer, right? The, t the type of person that doesn't go out to a convention. They don't do photo shoots. They don't this. They don't that. They just make videos and post them on TikTok. And I hate that. Like, there isn't really any sort of cosplayer other than the category that you cosplay, right? Like, you're a Star Wars cosplayer. You're an anime cosplayer. You're a, you're a sci-fi cosplayer. You're a Harry Potter cosplayer. Whatever. But, like, a TikTok cosplayer, like, you're a cosplayer, um, now, I definitely am not a TikTok cosplayer because I, I started cosplaying way before TikTok and TikTok did help me grow my audience. It did help me grow, grow what I love doing. Right. But it came at a cost of a mental health that I don't think I'll ever be able to just like be OK with TikTok and then just keep doing what I'm doing. I feel like that I need that just as a whole that I just need to stop being involved in TikTok as much as I have been. Um, and that's, that's just, that's just for me. I just feel that like TikTok, <laughs> TikTok 80% of the time is just not a good place to be. It, it just isn't. Let, let's, let's just, let's just say it like it is. Um, I go on TikTok and it's almost like every day it's like, what now? What, what, what is it now? Like there's a video of someone who is saying that so-and-so did this to them or, or they're saying that, 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 that someone had, 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 had been bullied to the point that they need to be put in a hospital because of something that they did. And it's just like, and it is all surrounding cosplay. And that's a big thing to me that has changed with cosplay. Now, a lot of the time when it comes, like obviously on with 
cosplay. It used to be almost used to be harder to ex- access people to bully them when it came to cosplay, right? When it was Facebook, you had to like either get in that group or f- find that page and be able to DM that person. It was definitely a lot more of a struggle to just troll someone and you didn't have a direct line to them a lot of the time. Um, obviously there was YouTube there, there was Facebook, there was Instagram. Like I said, Instagram for me didn't really take off until I started cosplaying. Um, but anyway, it's now it's like straight up a direct line to that. Like TikTok is such a wildly straight line to somebody. It's, it's unreal. It's unreal. Um, and everybody's on it for multiple hours a day. And that's, again, that's just another thing that I could go off on. And I probably will in another in another podcast episode. But for me, cosplay is just overall changed to where it, you know, on one hand, everyone just feels like a cosplayer. It doesn't feel like there's any pop or uh, professional cosplayers. It doesn't feel like there's anybody who's better than anybody. But on the other hand, it's a cesspool. Like there is, there is so much that's going on in almost every single week. Something bad tops the thing that the worst thing that I've ever heard that happened the week before. It's a weekly occurrence with this stuff in cosplay. Um, And on top of that, like I said, you had the conventions, like big thing for conventions for me was you had the convention creeps. You had the people taking upskirt pictures. You had the people grabbing, groping, assault, sexually assaulting people. Now you have the TikTok creeps that are saving people's photos and say, or saving people's videos and all this different stuff. And that's one big reason why I do not have my videos be savable on TikTok. Um, granted, yes, I know people can still get them somehow, but then I'm like, I know. Okay. I know. I know. I know who you are. I know. I know who, who you, I know what I know. I know what kind of person you are. Um, but anyway, that uh, I think that will do it for this episode. I know it ended on a really weird, dark, sad note, but I feel that a lot of cosplay is weird, dark, and sad. Like there's a lot more tragic stuff that happens in cosplay than a lot of people realize. Um, and I feel that it's become too normal. And I feel that um, I don't know. I feel just let the hobby just let the hobby be a hobby again. Um, it, it, it's starting to feel, it's starting to feel more like a full-time job, which for me, cosplay definitely is not a full-time job. Um, and again, it's a lot of it is self-induced, but when I look from the outside, looking in on a lot of different situations within the cosplay community, I'm noticing just, it's just, it's not getting worse. It's more, is just getting, it's as much, it's not getting worse. Less is hidden, right? You're seeing a lot more because a lot of stuff is crazily transparent on TikTok. Um, but I know, again, I know this kind of spiraled, um, but I just want to put this out there for the first episode of the Buckethead podcast. Um, to end it on a light note, I do want to say, just be good to each other, be good, stay safe and have fun. Like at the end of the day, cosplay is supposed to be about having fun. And that's one big thing I didn't touch on, which I'll talk about in the next one. Um, but just have fun. If it's fun and your page is private and you're having all the fun in the world and you're not getting any exposure. Okay, cool. Great. You're having fun. If you're having fun with millions of followers, great. Have fun, but also take care of yourself and be good to yourself and be good to others. That's all I got for now. I'll see you all in the next one.